Hey guys, Ivan here and we are starting this video with the most interesting part of it, obviously Big Ramy and his most recent video, new video. Now, if this is his recent physique update at 2 weeks out, I will uh, I will just change my prediction, I will say William Bonek is going to win it and Daxter Jackson is going to be second place. But we don't know this for sure. So basically, here you can see Big Ramy's TikTok account. Do you have TikTok? I most certainly don't, but Big Ramy does. And he posts a lot of videos and a lot of uh, posing footage that you probably won't see on his Instagram account. So if you take a look at this one, for example, it's been uploaded only three days ago. Three days ago. That will make two weeks out of Arnold Classic, well, physique update. But let's not hope that that's the case, because let me play this actually for you. And you can watch and you can tell. But look at him here. I'm sure he looks lean, but for two weeks out... I don't think this is two weeks out. I mean, come on. I'm sure he's just teasing us, he's playing games, he's probably, I guess, he's probably hoping that his opponents are going to see this somehow on TikTok and, you know, get a little bit too relaxed. But I don't think they believe this is him at two weeks out because we saw his face, basically, and, he lo and, it, and it looked much better than this. But then again, you take a look at this conditioning and it doesn't look, you know, really bad. He's in really good shape. I don't know when this was taken, but I'm pretty sure it wasn't it two weeks out. Look at the glutes here. Look at the glutes. It's just a fat ass. So, I don't think this is two weeks out. If it is, if it is, he's not winning Arnold Classic. No way. Not with Dexter and Bonek in the lineup. So, I'm sure this is a little bit older. This is probably like five, six weeks out or something. His face tells it. But he uploaded it three days ago and I wanted to share this with you guys. Oh, but take a look at Dexter. Take a look at Dexter at about 10 days out of Arnold Classic. And for the love of God, would you ever guess that this body is 5 decades old? 50 year old Dexter. Look at him here. Look at his body. I mean, look at the arms. Look at the chest, most importantly. And the shoulders and all those veins and all the separation and deep cuts. Just, you know, this is 90s conditioning. He is from the 90s, literally, and he is bringing that sharp conditioning. And his nickname is Blade for a reason. He is bringing it again. And uh, I don't know, if, if Cedric McMillan doesn't come in great shape, he's not going to be able to beat Dexter, because Dexter is definitely bringing it. Anybody in that top four should definitely look out for Dexter. If they slip a little bit, Dexter will take them out. Look at the conditioning, look at the chest, the shoulders. Jesus Christ, he is peeled. But here you can see the most recent physique update of Steve Lorius, the future classic physique Arnold Classic champion. I don't think anybody can beat him. And look at these proportions, look at the arms. God, I have so much more growing to do to get to this level. This guy is huge. These classic physique guys, they are not small by any means. Of course, they're not as big as the open guys. Those guys are monsters, but look at him here. This is just beautiful proportions and I think this is exactly what we were hoping for when the Classic Physique Division was created. Now, the question is not really, is he going to win the Arnold Classic? Because that's pretty obvious at this point, let's be honest. The question is more, can he win the Mr. Olympia later in this year? He didn't do the Olympia last year. He didn't wanna do it because he wasn't ready. He didn't feel like he was ready to win it. He wanted to work on improving his physique and if he came with the same shape that he had at the Arnold Classic 2019, he wouldn't have won the Mr. Olympia, of course. He would probably be in top 6, but not better than that. But right now, he definitely looks improved. And until the Mr. Olympia, we still have some time. And here you can actually see the physique update of Chris Bumstead, which doesn't really tell us anything. I'm sure this guy is going to stay the same at the Mr. Olympia as he was in 2020, it's all about bringing the same conditioning, you know that he has that kidney issue, so he needs to take it easy, I'm sure right now he's off the gear in the offseason, because this guy doesn't have to do any more growing, he turned pro in the open actually, so he actually downsized a little for the classic physique, and he's right there within the weight cap, so what he needs to do is just show up, <laughs> show up every year and come conditioned, and that's, that's a problem, of course, for him to, to get dehydrated because of the kidneys. He doesn't want to flare up again. If that stuff happens again, if the flare up happens days before the Mr. Olympia, who else is going to be there to win it? Is it going to be Brian Ainsley or Steve Lorius? We'll see. We'll see how Steve Lorius compares against Brian Ainsley. But as for now, 
I think he's the biggest threat to the Mr. Olympia title. I don't think it's Brian, I think it's Steve at this point. But we still have to see him on the stage, what he looks like under those lights compared to the other guys. But right now, I love what I see on Steve's physique. We also have a little something of Patrick Moore, he's doing some Romanian deadlifts, stiff leg deadlifts and he's actually squeezing his glutes at the top of the moment. I know I shouldn't be commenting on this, but honestly there is no tension in that part of the moment where he flexes his glutes, so I don't know why he's doing that. But maybe he believes in that uh, spot fat reducing when you have better mind-muscle connection to a muscle and if you use it more often you will lose more fat uh, from that area, so he wants to get the shredded glutes. I think it was a tip from Phil Heath. And these guys know what they're doing, even though it doesn't make any logical sense or scientific sense. They do it. They do it and it works for them, whatever is the reason. Would they look the same if they didn't do this stuff, like flexing their glutes when doing Romanian deadlifts and cardio, basically? Would their glutes still be shredded? I don't know. I don't really know. There is no science behind it, but these guys believe in it. And I'm sure it was proven by trial and error. So whatever, I mean, what works for him, he should keep doing it. Anyways, you can see his body fat right here and uh, yeah, he looks on point. A lot of you have him higher than what I had him in my prediction video. And I would also love to see him do better than that. But, you know, I'm just trying to be realistic here to make a proper prediction. Because based on his previous performance, based on so many factors, I don't think he's going to <laughs> be in the top. Uh, top 6, top 5 or in the Arnold Classic as some of the people may have said. We also have a little something of Sergio Oliva, most likely Patrick's opponent at the Arnold Classic. I think these guys are very close when it comes to muscularity and the, 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 the shape kind of, I guess you can say the aesthetics of their physiques and uh, I think age, they're, they're at the same age I believe, 35, 36, something like that. So this is a new photo of Sergio. I don't know if it is recent or not, but uh, here you can see that he's in a pretty good conditioning. It could be 5 weeks out, it could be 2 weeks out, we don't know. But I also wanted to mention the what I actually talked about in my previous Arnold Classic prediction video. If you haven't checked it already, go ahead and watch it and tell me what you think. But many people actually didn't agree with me giving Sergio 11th place. But I just don't see him doing better than that, you know, based on his muscularity and his shape and genetics. He has high lats and his waist is a little bit wider. And I also said in the video that his genetics are not as good. And I didn't mean to say that his genetics are bad. If they were bad, he wouldn't be a top pro. His genetics are definitely good for bodybuilding, but uh, not as good as the other guys, as the other 10 guys, for example, at this Arnold Classic that are about to beat him, in my opinion, and not as good as his father's genetics. So I saw a photo of his father and look at him here. I know, it's just one photo and it is uh, just an upper body photo. You cannot see his full body, it's not on stage. But you guys know what Sergio Oliva Sr. looked like. And you guys know that he looked much more impressive. His waist was definitely smaller. His arms were bigger. Look at the forearms, that's just insane. Lats may have been a little bit higher, but still very thick. And the chest was just insane. And guys, remember, this was probably taken during the 60s. During the 60s, you didn't have as many supplements, for example. Uh, some of them weren't probably as strong as they are today. Guys weren't using super high dosages. Um, also, you didn't have a coach. Nobody had a coach back then. Uh, the knowledge wasn't as good. Also, the equipment, the gym equipment wasn't as good as it is today. I can, you know, count so many, so many other things and still... Sergio Oliva Sr. looked better than his son. Why is that? I think it's because Sergio Oliva Jr.'s mother's genetics. If Sergio Oliva was only a, a son of his father, which doesn't make any sense, but if you had a clone, or if Sergio Oliva Sr. was competing today, that would be much better physique. Let, let's just agree on that. Sergio Oliva Jr. is a great bodybuilder. We'll see what his full potential is going to be, but at the age of 35, 36, maybe in 37, something like that, he's not super impressive, he's not winning the Mr. Olympia or anything like that. I know Sergio Oliva Sr. didn't really have uh, that kind of competition back then, not a lot of competitors, it wasn't as fierce as it is today, it wasn't as hard to make uh, the top, you know, to make it to the top, because it was just a handful of bodybuilders who were genetically gifted, so there, there is that, but still, I find Sergio Oliva Sr.'s physique way more impressive, even though it was taken, even though it was made back then. 
So that just sends us a message that Sergio Oliva Jr. doesn't have, you know, the ideal, perfect, feel heat type of genetics. And that's what I wanted to say, basically, in my video. He has great genetics to be a great pro bodybuilder, but to be our classic winner or Mr. Olympia winner, probably not gonna happen. And I think he knows that. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you have, please like it. If you want to see more bodybuilding content, and if you want to see the best Arnold Classic coverage, I'm gonna bury you with content at the Arnold Classic Ohio. Subscribe and like the video once again. All the best, guys, and bye-bye.